Hello everyone, uh, Cujo here. So, I was able to come to the hangar, uh, and I thought, it, it, because it's winter, I've been dealing with some crazy Midwest weather lately, I figured it might be a good video topic to demonstrate what I do for uh, preheating my plane. Uh, this isn't an exact experiment because the plane's obviously in the hangar, and it's a heated hangar. I usually keep it about 50 degrees or maybe just under. Uh, so this isn't like it was outside in you know, 20 degree weather or 15 degree weather all night. Um, so keep in mind this is going to be preheating the plane from somewhere in the 40 some odd degree uh, temperature uh, up to whatever we can get in about an hour uh, as a demonstration. Uh, I think if it was actually really cold sitting outside or something like that um, you'd probably get more of an initial temperature increase than what we're going to see today, just because of the delta. Um, but I'm going to go through the process. We'll do we'll do some checkpoints and see how it's heating. As you can see, I've got some apparatus here. So I've got my cowl cover and prop cover insulated. I've got a battery here that I bought last year. Uh, this is one of these lithium ion battery packs. This is a Chinese uh, version. Not too expensive these days. This one is about 644 watt hours. So I should be able to get about an hour's worth of preheat out of this battery. Um, the aircraft has a standard reef preheat on it, not the turbo. Uh, I believe it draws in the neighborhood of 450 watts. Um, uh, the turbo, I think, would be 600 plus. Um, but we'll see. We're going to do some experiments. And we'll check the temperature using uh, both a infrared thermometer and also uh, look at the uh, JPI. We're going to do some initial uh, infrared temperature testing. So I'll just start by looking at the uh, cylinder heads and then I'll hit the block up and maybe the oil cooler and we'll just try and get an average. It's about 50, 50 and a half is, is about what all the cylinders are reading. It looks like 50 and a half is about the winner. Um, oil cooler is maybe a touch warmer. It's hard with the metal, it reflects the infrared, so. But it looks like 50 and a half is about where we're at. So I'm gonna go ahead and check inside. I'll turn on the JPI and we'll see what the JPI says for oil temp. Okay, cylinder head temps are, it's saying 58. That may be true, it may just be the lowest it'll go, I'm not sure. Oil temp 57, okay. So 57 degrees, it seems on the warm side, given what we saw with the block, but okay. I don't know if you can see that, but it says 57 on the oil. So we'll use that as our starting point. A little over 20 minutes in, you can see, I, I don't trust the uh, power uh, monitoring on this. Uh, it, it pretty much says 320 watts max, but uh, I know that there's about 450 watts in the reef standard system. Uh, and I add just a, when I add the uh, small ceramic heater that didn't move, even though the ceramic heater turned on, it was blowing hot air. So I don't trust the indication. Uh, you see, it's about 74% battery life at this point. Uh, like I said, it's been on, oh, about 22 minutes or so. So we're going to do, I, I'll, I'll just wait to get the cylinder temp until we're done. Um, so I don't want to take the cover off. But we'll go turn on JPI and see what's doing. About 23 minutes in. 23. Okay, so cylinder head still similar. Maybe a few degrees. 58 to 61, I'm seeing. Oil says 62. So if you recall, when we started, the oil temp, at least on the JPI, was 57. So we've got about 5 degree movement on the JPI in about 23, 24 minutes. So we'll check again in another 20 minutes or so. So yeah, just a minute or two under 40 minutes. So we're at 
on the battery. So if you extrapolate, I would say you can get a little over an hour uh, doing this with this battery, with this particular battery pack. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that, but the cylinder's a few degrees warmer, but not, not much. Still low 60s. Oil temp is 66. So we're almost 10 degrees warmer than we started, if you recall, uh, at least according to the JPI, um, which started at 57. It's been maybe three minutes over the hour. So, okay, we're at 27% on our battery now. Okay, hopefully that's visible. 26%. Um, we're gonna go check the JPI and then I'm gonna remove the cover. Okay, cylinder still showing maybe mid to upper 60s. And the oil now is reporting 71. Okay, so let's see what we got. 55, 9, 57.2. See, the block is actually 65. It's probably because the, the oil was in the block. So we're getting mid to upper 60s. Again, the oil oil cooler is kind of all over the place, but the oil isn't going flowing through it. So. So, you know, I, I would say the cylinders started about just over 50. Um, they may be picked up, let's call it, 5 to 7 degrees in an hour, which isn't a whole lot. Um, the block, though, definitely seems closer to the oil temp that was read by the JPI. I think that was a, a pretty representative exper experiment, though, of... Uh, at least one way that I could preheat the uh, aircraft if I had to leave it outside. Um, basically, to recap, what we saw was uh, about a 14 degree rise in oil temperature over about an hour. Um, so in this case, it went from about, well, if you, if you trust the JPI readings, um, we're going to have to. I'll just use a relative difference. It started at 57 degrees according to the JPI and ended up at 71 degrees after about an hour. Um, the cylinder head temperatures appeared by based on JPI uh, to go up about 10 degrees. Uh, using the uh, infrared thermometer, uh, the cylinder head temps didn't show quite that much rise, but the block uh, showed similar to uh, the oil temp rise uh, that we saw on the JPI. So again, this was going from, you know, roughly my thermostat in the hangar says it's 50-ish degrees in here. So an ambient of about 50 degrees uh, to those numbers. Uh, I think, uh, based on what I've seen as, you know, on the Reef website, for instance, uh, they, they do some experiments um, as well. Um, that if we were starting at a lower temperature, I think the gradient would be a little faster. So, uh, you know, if we were at starting at 20 degrees instead of 50, um, you know, maybe that rise in an hour would have been more like 20 degrees instead of 14 degrees. Um, I don't really want to run that experiment because that would mean I have to leave my plane outside. But uh, I, I can, I'll try to pay attention to that next time uh, that I actually have it overnighted somewhere. Uh, but either way, I think that this, could, this is beneficial if you have to leave it outside in rough, let's call it 20 degree type temperatures. Uh, if you can get a 20 degree oil temp rise, that gets you over freezing uh, in a pinch if you don't have access to wall socket power um, or you can't put it in a hangar overnight. Uh, obviously, if you were down to like zero degrees overnight or something like that, then I, this probably isn't going to cut it because you're still going to probably be below freezing. But um, it, it gives you something. It gives you a, this battery pack is about an hour worth of, of energy, a little bit more. It actually ended up at about 25%. Um, you can get a bigger battery, and then you know maybe you get two hours of, of heat, and that would clearly uh, you know give you a significant boost. Um, 
Some people use gener generators, small Honda generators. Uh, that's another way to go, definitely. you got to carry a generator with the fuel and stuff around. So that, that's why I was trying to avoid that, uh, and that's why I went with the battery route. So, and obviously, if you can, put it in a hangar, uh, you know, depending on where you're at and when you're flying. Uh, just pop for the hangar overnight. That's probably the best way to go. But hope you found this interesting. I'm going to go fly.